Hello and welcome back to my final cloth update, at least for this baby. This is my final cloth ah! update because I have no intention to purchase any more cloth diapers for ah! Alden. We have moved away from cloth diapers during the day to using trainers. Alba is one years old, but the elimination communication stuff I'll cover in a different video. There are a few things that I changed my mind about when it comes to cloth diapers, and I'm going to share that in today's video. In my cloth update, prior to this one. I did a review on the Pocoloki Snap It Pro and the Assembly Organic Cotton Fitted Diapers. If you're watching this video and you're thinking like, I don't know those brands, I have no intention to use those brands, I do still think that this video could be useful because what I detail is a lot less about the brand per se and a lot more about the design of a diaper and my personal preferences when it comes to how they work, how they fit, how easy it is to use them. So I think this information can still be useful even if you have no intention to purchase those brands. Some relevant background. From the newborn phase, I like to use fitted and flats with a cover over. I do not like to use pocket diapers. I had many pocket diapers. I tried them out and I really, really don't like using pocket diapers. I also stopped using flats more or less after the newborn phase. The more mobile Elba became, the more I just didn't find that I enjoyed putting on flats. And also what I loved about them for the newborn phase is that for whatever size legs, flats have a great fit. But the fit of the diaper was no longer a cause for concern or something that I needed after the newborn phase. So I did purchase up front flats in size small, size medium, size large. The small I used, newborn phase. The medium I used maybe a handful of times and now currently they're all over my house being used as cloths and then the large are still brand new never used never washed up in a box in my closet i'm deciding if i'm going to sell them or use them as cloths around my house now with the fitted and the cover mostly my stash was made up of the pokoloki ones and i only had newborn and medium and those i purchased when i was still pregnant and i shipped them from south africa to canada there was a time that I thought that I would need the larger size, but Pocoloki discontinued the fitted that I'm currently using and the fitted that has featured in all of my other videos. And they replaced it with something that they called the Snap It Pro. So because I'd heard good things about that and I had enjoyed the use of the fitted up until that point, I did purchase the Snap It Pro and I paid quite a lot in shipping and import duties to get them here from South Africa. I tried to use them, I made a review video when I was still trying to use them. I continued after that video for a while to try to use them, but they frustrated me and eventually I just decided I'm not gonna continue to frustrate myself, this is a sunk cost for me. The main thing that frustrated me about them is that the design for me is more similar to pockets than it is to fitted and using a cover. So yes, they're not pockets in that you don't put inserts into them, but they still have a similar mechanism where the insert is just snapped onto the cover. Anyway, I did have leaks with them several times when I was using them. And when I filmed my review video, I hadn't yet spoken to the owner, which I said in that video is very helpful when it comes to leaks. After that video, she did contact me and I did speak to her about the leaks. Her recommendation after seeing a picture of my fit was to add one to two additional boosters. But this was to improve the fit, not for absorbency because the inner wasn't becoming saturated and then leaking out. I was getting leaks where the inner is not completely wet. Do you understand the recommendation? However, for my preference with using cloth diapers, I don't want to add bulk and boost unless it's for absorbency purposes. I don't wanna be adding additional bulk simply to make the diaper fit such that it doesn't leak because I don't have that issue with fitted ones at all. I can have no boosters in them if it's a small urinary output and it will make sure not to leak. So my view with that is I don't want to add boosters to make something fit better. I only wanna add boosters and inners if it's a requirement for absorbency. They were also marketed as being really easy to use and I did watch the video on how to put them on and I mean theoretically it's easy enough to put them on but the more mobile and the more busy Elba became the more I found it very frustrating to put them on and I found that I wasn't reaching for them because 
based off the video and based off of my experience, they require a very specific way to fit in order not to leave. And I don't want to be so hyper-focused on the fit of my diaper, given that at that point, I was still changing diapers several times a day. And the older Elba got, the more she didn't necessarily want to lie still for that activity. So it's something I want to be able to do relatively efficiently without being worried that it's going to leak because I didn't put it on perfectly. Now with my experience with the fitted diapers that I have is that you don't have to pay that much attention to how they're put on as long as the fitted part is inside and the cover covers all of the fitted part. Then I also found that they were messy compared to what I was used to using. I did do a demonstration with elimination communication in my review video on how I had to remove them with like my whole hand. But the other concern that I had with that is with a poop diaper, poop would always go on to the cover. Now, with a fitted in the flat system, the poop was always contained in the inner diaper. I didn't have to wash the cover, except for like rare exceptional cases. But for the most part, the poop was contained in that inner diaper. With the Snap It Pro, however, every single time, it went onto the cover. The owner, because she'd seen my video, responded to me saying, you know, well, that's bound to happen with breastfed poop because it's liquid. Once she moves onto solid, this won't be a problem anymore. They also sent out a newsletter to say that. And that's fine, I understand that, but that's not my preference when it comes to diapers, given that the fitted system holds all of it inside. And I don't want to use a diaper where I'm waiting for her poop to change for it to keep the mess contained because the only reason I'm using them is to keep the mess contained. In my experience also, the change of poop, so I'm talking a lot about poop, but I mean, this is a cloth diaper video, didn't change in texture as like a stark contrast when she started solid. So had I continued to use those diapers, I would have had messy stuff for a while. Now, thankfully we do do elimination communication. So it was very rarely that I dealt with that situation, but yeah. it's a situation that I don't think is necessary for me to yeah. deal with because it's the design of the diaper that results in that. Cause yeah. I don't have that experience with a different yeah. design. Anyway, so after a while I just decided, you know what? This is really not working for me. I'm not going to continue to frustrate myself in the name of, I thought this was going to be great. And I thought this was going to work for us. And I went through all the effort and I paid the expense of shipping them from South Africa to Canada. I was worried about, you know, what do I do with them now? Because now I have this stash that was in really good quality still, but nobody in Canada is aware of this type of design and wouldn't even know how to explain it to them. And they don't know the brand either. So what I did was I posted on a secondhand Facebook group for cloth diapers in South Africa saying like, look, they're in Canada, but I can get them to South Africa if you're interested. And somebody was interested and willing to wait for them. So thankfully my mom came to visit and then she took the whole stash with her from here, Canada to Spain, back to South Africa to Cape Town where they went to their new owner. So I did lose some money on purchasing those diapers and that's fine. Thankfully I did manage to recoup some of the expenses by selling them. The other thing that I changed my mind about is that the Pokoloki brand I used to recommend when people asked me about cloth diapers. I no longer recommend them. Firstly, because they discontinued the ones that I do use and the ones that I did like to use and I don't like using the Snap It Pro and I don't think that they worked for me and I don't like the design. I'm obviously not going to recommend a design of a diaper that I found didn't work for me. But then even when I thought about it, when people were asking me for recommendations for the newborn phase, there were a few things that started to, I guess, irk me about it and I didn't feel all that excited to recommend them anymore. Now, the main thing was, remember I purchased all my cloth diapers in the midst of us immigrating to a new country. I didn't know what my preferences were gonna be. I didn't have all that much time to do that much research. So I just went with what was like really popular, what I thought would be the best and have kind of learned through usage what is or isn't working for me and made, I guess, a couple of <laughs> mistakes, so to speak, along the way. So when it came to the newborn one, when somebody asked me about that, a friend was giving birth and she asked me like, what would you recommend for that? I had time to go sit and think, is there an alternative that I would now purchase if I was going through the newborn phase again? I did find an alternative that looked really cool and that I would have been really excited to purchase. Now what's leading me to say that is I do, I like fitted and flats with a cover for the newborn phase. Flats really are great. And then throughout the night I used the fitted ones, but what was starting to irk me was that 
with the Pokoloki stuff is not entirely transparent on their website. At the time of recording this video, it's not. What the diapers are made of. So it is clear that they say their nighttime nappies are 100% cloth, but the other ones don't include what they're made of. And I did read somebody else's experience who also said that they, I guess, like fell for this. It's not falling for it like I could have asked. I eventually did ask and they are a cotton blend. Ah. Now I didn't ask what that cotton is blended with, but I'm going to guess that it's blended with polyester because that's usually what a cotton blend is. I've spoken about this before. My preference is to not have polyester clothing and to not have polyester touching Alba's skin. So when I did then look into are there other alternatives in South Africa, I found a company and I'm gonna link them down below that makes the same design or similar design diaper to what I like, the fitted the flats with the covers, and they are 100% cotton and also they're cheaper. So these are the ones that I recommended to my friend to use. They arrived, she sent me a video, they looked awesome. She's used them for the entire newborn phase and they seem to work really well for her. So I haven't personally used them and I haven't decided what I will do with a future baby, but I think I might actually go ahead and purchase those as well. And the main reason for that is because I would prefer to use a hundred percent cotton as opposed and organic cotton, but these I think are just cotton as opposed to using polyester, especially if the diaper is cheap. All right, then the final note on why I've stopped recommending them. There is a Pokoloki support group where people ask questions and they post like their experiences and so forth. It is run by the brand. So on that, I did post the cloth diaper videos that I made. And then the final one, the review video, the owner contacted me to say that that video was negative and she has removed it from the Facebook group. Uh, the main reason she gave was that I spoke about leaks without having spoken to her first and that the cloth diaper market in South Africa is incredibly competitive. So I could do a lot of damage thinking about leaks. I understand that. But the thought that came into my mind when my video was deleted was when I bought the Snap It Pro, I had only heard or read how amazing they were and how much everybody loved them. So I assumed I would love them too, which is why I went through the effort and the money to bring them all the way to Canada. And then when I found I didn't like them, I kept wondering like, am I the only person who really likes the old design and doesn't find that the new design works for me at all? And I, the reason I thought that is because the Snap It Pro, in my opinion, like I said, represents more of a pocket style diaper than it does fitted in flat. So I was wondering, do other people who like the fitted system, did they find the similar frustrations that I had or was this just my experience? So the thought that popped into my head was, well, if my video was removed, were other people's experiences removed who didn't like them? And now I'll never know that and I'm not, I'm not saying that's what happened, but that's what popped into my head when she said that she removed my video because I spoke about leaks and I hadn't spoken to her first. So what I did say to her when we were talking was just that the removal of my video, I understand it's her group, no hard feelings there. However, it did for me tarnish the trust that I had in the brand. And I think it's just because I really value transparency, transparency in what your diapers are made of, transparency if some people find that a certain design is not their preference and that that information is okay to be out there. But anyway, a large portion of this video, I spoke about the one brand, but that's because that one brand made up 99% of my cloth diaper stuff. But there are other things that I changed my mind on too, and I'm gonna move on to them now. Okay, one thing I do want to say before I move on is that I understand I probably sound like a bit of a cloth diaper snob in this video sharing like things that I'm very particular about and I get that. But that being said, maybe I am just a cloth diaper snob. But it's that when it comes to something like cloth diapers, you want convenience as far as possible and you want what works for you. And given that I know what works for me, I can maybe be a bit particular when I'm using other ones that don't work for me given that I know there are options that do work better for me and that I would prefer to use. So another thing that I changed my mind on was that I shared in a few of my videos that I like Velcro rather than press studs. I've changed my mind slightly on that for a few reasons. I did expect that this was gonna happen, but Velcro does wear easier over time 
and if I didn't stick it nicely, it did cause some sort of wear to the diaper. And also in my laundry, if I forgot to close it or put it into a mesh bag, then it also resulted in some wear to our other clothing, which is not great. Now, I still preferred Velcro, even though that's likely to happen, because of how easy and convenient it is to put on. But what I found was that when I was out and about, I actually was reaching a lot more for my assembly organic cotton ones with a cover, which are entirely press studs. And I found that they were the easiest to do when I was doing like diaper changes in the car. Obviously the car was parked in the parking lot. When Elba's like standing on the car seat, wriggling around, like wanting to look out the window, these were the easiest for me to use because I knew exactly, okay, I'm gonna press them there and there. And I didn't have the inner parts that I needed to manage when she's like super wriggly and they're coming out all over the place because the assembly diapers, the inner part is attached to the diaper. So that makes it a lot easier if your kiddo is super wriggly and you're trying to put their diaper on. So that's not that much about the press studs, but interestingly, it just resulted in that I was using these ones more and finding them easier to use when I was out and about. They're also less elements and less bulky so they fit in my diaper bag a lot better all right i'm not entirely like swapped over from velcro versus press studs but i'm just not so set in my preference for velcro anymore anyway there's something else i also changed my mind about and that is around my wash routine and the ammonia buildup now, everything that I read said, if you get an ammonia buildup, it means there's something wrong with your washing routine. And I thought that there was. So I would just do more dramatic washes, made loads of changes to my wash cycle. I changed my detergent several times and I was washing our stuff so intensely that it was causing our other clothes to wear really quickly because I need things to bulk up the cloth diaper load, even though I do have the agitators. And washing our stuff so intensely, every single wash was not great for everything else. So the more I looked into like all the changes I kept making with my wash routine, trying to figure it out to not get an ammonia buildup, I also realized that some cloth diaper designs, especially like the fitted ones, are more prone to an ammonia buildup, like especially the night nappies. And that instead of doing such a intense wash, trying to avoid it and still not avoiding it, like maybe delaying it slightly, but definitely not not getting a buildup, I decided I'm going to have a normal-ish, whatever, like normal routine, like calm it down, not cause damage to our other clothing, wash, and then just accept that every now and again, I'm gonna strip my diapers when they get an ammonia buildup. And I understand it's not good for them to get stripped, but it was also not good for all of my other laundry and probably also not the diapers to go through such an intense washing routine every single day. So I used to do like two full like runs of a cycle on the washing machine to wash the diapers. I no longer do that. I do a rinse if necessary, like in the morning, especially the night nappies need a rinse, so I rinse them in the morning. And then when I put them on, I do a pre-wash with a Nelly Oxygen bleach and then a full heavy duty cycle that runs, I think for like, I don't know, almost two hours or so on warm. And then I add in an extra <laughs> rinse at the end. And that's all I'm doing now. And it seems to be fine for the rest of our clothes. And it seems to be fine for the diapers. <laughs> Fine, meaning I'm assuming I'm probably gonna get an ammonia buildup. If you wanna know how I did the stripping, I've done it in three different, no, two different ways now, and the second way worked way better. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see what I used to strip the diapers and how I strip the diapers. Okay, and then there's some stuff around night nappies, but I, I think I'm just going to make a separate video <laughs> around night nappies, because that's like a different thing for me. And also that ties in with some of my preferences around elimination communication. So night nappies I'll cover in a different video, but I am still using the Pokoloki cotton night nappies. And for the time being, I thought that I needed a larger size. I mean, they discontinued it anyway, so I couldn't get it, but I'm still using the size two assembly diapers for when we're out and about. And for nap time, the rest of the time we've moved on to cloth trainers. 
And then also I'm still using the Pokoloki fitted with the cover for that and the medium size is still fitting Elba yeah. at a year old. And that brings me to the end of ah! my video. I'm just gonna end with some concluding remarks on you know what I said about the brand. You can stay tuned for that if you wanna hear that or just thank you for watching. So just my concluding remarks on the brand. I avoided making this video for a long time. All of that stuff happened like months ago. And the reason I avoided making this video is I really have a lot of compassion and a lot of empathy for small business owners all over the world and small business owners in South Africa and small businesses in the eco-friendly space. So I'm often very mindful that I don't want to say anything that does harm to somebody's business. But the reason I still felt that I wanted to make this video and share the things is because I also think that it's valuable to, to share our experience. And I know that I look to videos like this to hear somebody else's experience. And that doesn't mean I make the same decisions that they make. It just means that it's helpful to factor into my decision-making and my thinking. So I just wanna share that this was really just, it's my opinion and my experiences. I'm just trying to be aware of, I guess, respect to small businesses while still being transparent about what my experience has been with something. So anyway, if you join me for this final cloth update video, thank you so much. If you like this video, please like the video. And if you like my content, please consider subscribing to my channel.